quick. It's going to take about a minute, about one minute, and uh, maybe a minute and a half. And I want you to see something. I want you to look at this. Now, uh, this, this is very weird to show you the day that you and I are living in. This took place over in the woods, over here in the mountains of North Carolina. All right? Now, I want you to look at this right quick and listen as they mourn the death of a tree. Now, turn it up. <laughs> Deep in the woods of North Carolina, an extremist eco-group called Earth First bewails the violation of American nature. I want to mourn the loss of all the old growth trees I've seen and tell them that we love them and that we don't want them to die that there are some people here who do care so I want you to know that trees that we care I think we are deeply hurting in America I think we are deeply craving answers I think that we've lost our identity as we have evolved into technology and into industrialized society. Bring me to this cathedral. Bring me to those guys. Bring me to this rock that has the most incredible life. That makes me feel alive. I've looked at clear cuts and burnt forest and I've felt outraged, but I didn't scream and I didn't cry. And I need to. <laughs> now, now y'all, I mean, my goodness, you shouldn't be. You. All right, give me them lights. Now look, people, these are the kind of people that call me and you crazy. Yes, sir. That's why Lester Roloff said America is an insane asylum run by the inmates. Buddy, I'm, I don't, you know, you hate to make fun of people, but they, people, you see that people like that, they would locked them up somewhere. I mean, when you're crying over the, a tree falling. Now look, I'm, gonna, I'm just give out, put that thought in your mind this morning, and I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. I use that as just a little introductory thought this morning. And, and we're going to go from there. Now tonight, as you, as you can see, I want you to pay attention to me this morning. And if you're sitting there this morning trying to figure out who that is and who that is and who that was and who that was and who that was, now, then you missed it last Sunday night. We won't have time to go into all that again tonight, but we are going to hit it. So you need to be here for your Christian education tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to show you the different lines in church history going all the way back to the Apostle Paul and then the Reformation. Well, tonight I'm going to tell you what the difference between a Lutheran and an Episcopalian and a Methodist and a Presbyterian and a Church of God and Assembly of God and a Baptist and a... And a uh, Congregationalist and the Church of the Brethren and Reformed. Uh, I'm going to tell you the difference in that tonight. So you do well to change your lazy plans and be back here this evening at 6 o'clock. That's not what I'm going to preach about, but look at Matthew chapter 23 this morning, and I want to show you something here in the Bible. Matthew 23, and look at verse number uh, 28 first, and hold your Bible open. Don't close them. Matthew 23, 28. This is Jesus Christ speaking, and he said, Even so ye outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within... You are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Hypocrisy and iniquity. Look at that word, hypocrisy. Now, you want to see a scathing chapter? There's not a more scathing, blister-burning message in the Bible than Matthew 23. There's not a harder message preached to people than Jesus Christ preached. 
Somebody told me yes, that Jesus never, he never like condemned anybody or pointed. I don't know what Jesus he's been reading about. But let me tell you what the real Jesus said. Now, that word hypocrisy is in there one time, and the word hypocrite is in this chapter seven times. Seven times Jesus calls somebody a hypocrite. Look at it. Matthew 23, verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, you don't go in yourself, and you don't let anybody else in. Verse 14, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, you'll receive the greater damnation. 15, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he's made, you make him twofold more child of hell than yourself. That's pretty straight preaching there, ain't it? You'd get run out of most churches today to say what Jesus Christ said in his day. That's how far churches have got away from Bible preaching. Now, let's go on down there to verse number uh, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. He so said you, you make sure you pay tithes on. If you get 10 cents, you make sure you give one cent. That's all good. But he said you forgot about mercy, faith, and judgment. These ought you have done and not leave that other undone. Still pay your tithes, but don't be a hypocrite and leave off mercy, judgment, and faith. Look at verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Look at verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are indeed like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear to outward, a beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Uh, verse 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Ye build the tombs of the prophets. And verse 30, he said, if we'd been in them days, we wouldn't have killed them. And verse 34 said, I'll send you prophets and wise men, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Now, seven times Jesus calls somebody hypocrite, and in the middle of the chapter, he used the word hypocrisy. That's what I'm preaching on. The word hypocrisy. That's an awful sounding word. I mean, just that word is yucky sound. Don't, don't that sound like, ugh, like green slime or something? That's what I think of when I hear that word hypocrisy. Nasty sounding word. And uh, the truth is that there's hypocrisy. It comes from this little Greek word they call it. And it means actually, that word actually comes from a word that means to play a part or to be an actor like in a movie or something. You're, you're really not a cowboy. You're playing the part of a cowboy. You're really not a killer. You're playing the part of a killer. And it's, it's like an act. It's like, like an act. And the Lord used that word to describe people hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. A hypocrite is somebody who never intends to be what he pretends to be. Amen? And the truth is... You ain't going to like this, but the truth is every single one of us in here today has had hypocrisy in us to one degree or another. Right. You might as well admit it. Have you ever uh, been cutting up in school and cutting up with the, and all of a sudden the teacher walk in and you act like you're doing your homework? You know, uh, that's, that's, why, that's hypocrisy. We've all, have you ever, um, have you ever, uh, your wife smacked you uh, because you was looking at another one, you went, I wasn't looking at it like that. Stuff like that. Uh, have you ever, uh, you know, there's all, there's hypocrisy in every single one of us to a little bit of degree, and it's true. Now, we got to work that out and get that junk out of us and be real and be what we are and be what we're supposed to be for the glory of God. It's like that fellow one time, this, this, uh, this uh, uh, preacher's driving down the road, and uh, he's weaving all over the road like that, and a cop got in behind him, and uh, he, he pulled him over. He said, Preacher, you, you, something wrong with you? And he said, No, sir. I, I, I had, had, a, had a bottle there between his legs. And he's drinking. He said, Let me see that. He said, What is that? Preacher said, It's water. He said, Let me see it. He said, All right. And he, and, uh, he uh, held that. That cop smelled that. And he said, Preacher, that ain't water. That's wine. He went, Whoo! Praise God. He done done it again. 
Uh, you know, like, that's, that's, that's hypocrisy. <laughs> and the Lord didn't do nothing there. <laughs> but did you know, that's what that is. That's what that is. That's hypocrisy. Yeah. It's give a false impression, you know. It's, I tell you, what people used to call it, they used to call it playing possum. You ever, how many of you heard that old expression, he's playing possum? You know where that comes from? They say at a possum, an old possum, you're supposed to say opossum, but around here we just say possum. Uh, possum, grits, and gravy, you know. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, and they, they say them things. They are so good at playing the hypocrite, playing possum, that they can actually, when you shoot at them, Andrew, they can act like they got shot, and they'll fall out of the tree, and her, her tongue hanging out, and her eyes roll back. That, honest to goodness, that's what I read. And they said them things, they play dead so that their, their predator will think, you know, they, they ain't, you ain't worth a chase or something like that. I don't know why they do that. I don't know. But it's given a false impression uh, to the pastor, to the wife, to the husband, to the children. Ananias and Sapphira in the Bible uh, made everybody think that they were given what they supposed to, but they really didn't and lost their lives for being a hypocrite. They'd have been better off just not to give nothing and say nothing, and they wouldn't have died. Now, let's, let's go over this a little bit this morning, and I want to give you four things that you want to watch out for and I want to watch out for and what hypocrisy is according to the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one. What hypocrisy is, is when you say and do not. Verse number three said, he said, uh, he said uh, all that they observe you do, do. But don't do after their works, because they, they can talk a big talk and don't do much at all. You know what that is? You know what Jesus said? He said, look, you want to know how to live? You do everything they tell you to. But don't live like they do, because they talk it and don't what? Walk it, right? And, and it's somebody, and it's us sometimes when we say and do not. Lord have mercy, people. There's an old saying. I wonder who can keep up with me here. I want, there's an old saying that we have in the country that we say it's called practice what you preach, right? And everybody knows that old saying. It's called practice what you preach. They say and do not. He said, these Pharisees, they can tell you everything you're doing wrong, but don't pay no attention to their life. But do listen to what they say. How many of you got an aunt somewhere or an uncle somewhere, and boy, they know everything about the Christian life. I mean, Lord, have mercy. They point out everybody else's faults. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, her, her dress is cut down to here and up there, and she says, did you see how she's dressed? You know, people like that. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, people that uh, say and do not. I know people that don't even go to church, and they can tell you everything that you ought to do. Yeah. Everything that you do wrong, son, they can point it out. Uh, I thought you was a preacher. You know, I, and they know, they know, Lord. But Jesus said they say and do not. They have no intentions of living, but they're ready to correct you or anybody else on any little step you may take out of the way. We do it at church all the time. Sometimes I think we sing hypocritically. We do. We sing sweet hour of prayer, and I can't get y'all to pray five minutes, most of you. And I, we sing onward Christian soldiers, and I'm thinking, whatever. You know, y'all ain't fought a battle uh, for the Lord in six years. Uh, so I, uh, we, we sing, I love to tell the story and never mention Jesus to one person all week long. We sing, serve the Lord with gladness, and say, why do we have to go back tonight? Why don't he lay off? Yeah, okay. Uh, we sing, blessed be the tie that binds, brother, and fuss and gripe, and I don't like her, and I'm mad at him, and she had no baby, her baby, uh, pinks my baby, you know, and stuff like that. We sing, we, we're marching to Zion, and can't even march into Sunday school. We sing, throw out the lifeline, and never give out a track, wouldn't go visiting for life, depended on it. We sing, showers of blessings, and stay home with 25 drops of rain. Amen? I mean, we, we clean the outside of the platter, but it's inside. Well, that's an amazing illustration. I, the Lord said you clean the outside of the platter, but inward. Here's the way I picture it. It's like taking a crock pot and washing it and shining it real good, and you see that crock pot, and you think, my goodness, and you open it up, 
and there's rotten food been in there for months. And Lord, that's what Jesus said to people that we clean the outside. We put on a tie, you know, we comb our hair, brush our teeth, you know, and everything. And boy, if you opened it up, ugh, all you'd see is maggots and, and worms and, and filth and dirt and, and sewage. That's what he said. Now, these people uh, that I showed you a while ago, uh, I wonder what would happen if we uh, uh, examine them a little bit. Now think about that. They think it is a sin to cut down a tree. And they say that that tree is, is the same as us. They almost equal, some of, equal a tree's life to a human life. And I was wondering, would that same crowd uh, mow their grass? Uh, or would that same crowd cut weeds out of their yard? Now, if, if a tree has life, a weed has life. And if that, re if that was real, it's not. If that was real and I broke it like that, they'd say I broke its arm or something, you know, uh, that I'm, I'm being mean to it. And they say, listen, just because that tree's big and strong does not mean that that poor little weed growing in your garden uh, shouldn't be able to live too, right? I mean, it can't help it. It's not as big and strong as that big old tree. So if you can't cut that tree down, you can't cut that, you can't cut that, uh, uh, we done. You see how hypocritical that is. I mean, it's like people that don't believe in killing an no animals. We're all we're animal life. Don't believe in killing animals, and will hire a man to come and spray their house to kill them precious roaches. <laughs> Those precious roaches have just as much right to live as Bambi. Just because they're not as cute, boy. Some of y'all getting quiet on me. You ain't been reading your Bible. You've been watching stupid documentaries that make you think animals talk. And cartoons where the snake was cute and the bird was cute and they all talked to each other. No! God put animals on a lower level. I mean, you want a hypocrite, it's somebody who says, don't kill no animals and wears leather shoes or a leather belt or uh, uh, leather gloves or has leather seats in their big, nice SUV. How could you drive a car and kill them precious gnats on your windshield? You murderer! The truth is, you say, well, well, no, no, that, no it ain't different. Listen, if, 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 uh, if you can't kill a cow, you can't kill a rat. Let all rats live. Rats have rights too. Now you see how insane it starts getting. And my job is to make you think with common sense. One of my callings is to make people think with common sense. And that's what I'm doing to you right now. And common sense ain't too common nowadays, right? You get on TV and talk like this, people think, oh no, oh no. It's because they're hypocritical. They say and do not. They're animal lovers. They take foo-foo and, and get his nails done at the doctor and, and take care of him, but will not walk across the street to have a bus kid out of a dirty house to come to know Jesus uh, as his Savior. They're putting animals ahead of God, and brother, animals don't go ahead of God. Animals don't have a soul. Animals don't have an a, a, a eternal life. When they die, they're dead. People have an inappropriate unnatural affection for animals nowadays. Right. I'm telling you, it's demonic. It's seducing spirits. Now, you know, I guess in the old day you get attached to your horse, you get attached, ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've been attached to a dog, but there's nothing wrong with that. But good night, people. You're bordering on lunatic fringe, right. the way people act over animals nowadays. <whistles> Getting quiet in here, amen. They say and do not. Number two. The second part of hypocrisy is when you do your good works to be seen of men. Jesus said, he said, uh, you for a pretense, make long prayer. These Pharisees would go down to the street corner and stand and say, O oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'd and I stand there forever and never even pray to home. He said, for a pretense, make long prayer. The truth is, everybody hates this sin. That's real the title of the message, and it'll be the sin that everybody hates. And you know, 
it's the sin everybody hates. Some people love other kinds of sins, but this sin everybody hates as long as it's in somebody else. As long as it's somebody else, we all hate it. Even hypocrites hate hypocrisy uh, that's in other people. Amen? That sure is right. I'm telling you, brother, it's all their works that these seem to be of men. They enlarge the borders of their garment. Now, you know, I, I'm preaching on the opposite spectrum. Usually we preach about old skimpy girls going out nearly naked and stuff. These people do it the other way. I mean, their dress is down to that. They, they will not wear no makeup, and I'm not fussing at you if you don't. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not being judgmental here, but it's almost like they take pride in their holiness. Here I am. See how long my hair is? Never been cut. I'm more holy than you are. Now, a woman should have long hair. Her hair is given to her for a covering. I'm not preaching against that. I'm just saying people, they enlarge the borders of their garment. Overboard. I wear a tie mowing my grass. Stuff like that. It's hypocrisy. You outward appear righteous unto man. Now, Lord have mercy, I'm not saying let up. Most of you are in no danger of going too far to the right. Uh, but I'm telling you this morning, people, it's when you do works to be seen of men. Amen? You are being hypocritical. That's right, brother. Uh, for a pretense, make long prayer. It's like, it's like when you come in. Somebody says, what's wrong? I'm fasting for the glory of God. That's, that's what he, he said. When you, when you fast, you're supposed to brush your teeth and you take, eat an altoid and brush your hair and walk in and say, glory to God, it's good to be saved so nobody don't know you're fasting. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Man, after you fast a while, them altoids are delicious. They taste like steak. Uh, I'm telling you something, brother. Hey, you hear me this morning? Uh, like this fellow, they said he worked at, uh, got a job at the zoo and uh, uh, he was working, there, working around doing stuff and the gorilla died and they had a bunch of people coming in that week to see the, see the animals and they got him a gorilla suit and they said look we're going to hire you to be the gorilla this weekend and they said all right now all you got to do is run around and, and act like you you know you know act like a gorilla act and so he he uh he put the gorilla suit on everything went good there for a while people come in oh mama look at the gorilla Rawr! you know he he was he, and they said my goodness that's a that's an aggressive, smart gorilla uh, like that. Well, everything went pretty good there for a little while, and he was over there playing around, messing around like that, and fell over the fence and fell in the lion cage. And he looked over there, and there was that lion looking at him. He thought, oh, my goodness, I'm not even really a gorilla. And, and he, he said, what am I going to do now? And he just uh, t took his hat and said, somebody help me! And the lion come over and went, shut up, you're going to get us both fired. <laughs> that's, the way people, that's the way people are. They're not just putting on some kind of act like, like they're something that they're not. It's like preachers who act. Uh, it's pre I know preachers that say one thing at one camp meeting and go to another camp meeting and say com something completely different. I know preachers that say, well, I can preach that at this church but not at that church. I mean, something wrong there, y'all. People say, well, when I'm with this crowd, I believe like them. And when I'm with that crowd, I believe like them. He said, take heed that you do not your works before men, ladies and gentlemen. You know what they call a person who with this crowd is one way and that crowd another way? hypocrite, a politician. That's a perfect definition of a politician. Wherever you're at, that's who you're like. Number three, quickly. Number three, when you judge other people for doing the same thing that you do. And we got a saying for that in the South. It's called, that's the pot calling the kettle black. That's an old saying. I don't know who started it. It's like somebody says, I don't go to church. There's too many hypocrites. One at flea market told me that a couple weeks ago. I said, here, Jesus loves you. I walked in invite you to church. She said, I don't go to church. I mean, mean. And I said, uh, well, you need to. She said, I ain't going up there with all them hypocrites. And I thought, well, I, I'm sorry. I want to tell her like that preacher told that other woman one time. She said, preacher, I ain't going up there. You got too many hypocrites. He said, oh, come on. One more ain't going to hurt us. That's the way it is, amen. I mean, who you ain't got no right to judge a hypocrite if you don't even come to church yourself. 
How many of you got some old uncle sitting at home somewhere this morning or, or somebody in your family? And, oh, they judge everybody in the church. They all bunch of And they wouldn't hit a lick at a snake for God if their life depended on it. They don't read the Bible. Listen, people, we ain't perfect here, but at least we're trying and we do go to church and try to worship God. If a hypocrite's keeping you from church, he's closer to God than you are. Amen? One old man said, I'd rather go to church with the hypocrites than go to hell with them. Yep. That's right, brother. Amen. You say, well, there ain't too many hypocrites. Yeah, I know. And they, you know what I told her? I said, these hypocrites at Walmart, you quit going there. Yep. Biggest hypocrites in the world are the people who fuss about the hypocrites. That's right. Amen. He said they garnish the temple of their their fathers, and say, if we'd have been there, we wouldn't have killed them. But within, they're full of dead men's bones. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring up something here this morning. It's like Hollywood. In my opinion, Hollywood is one of the biggest bunch of hypocrites behind politicians. The last thing politicians and Hollywood needs to be doing is criticizing preachers. Preachers couldn't hold a lot to politicians and movie stars when it comes to hypocrisy. Amen. I like Meryl Streep holding up a, a supporting Roman Polanski who was in jail for raping a 13-year-old girl and they were let him out. He, they had a petition sign to get him out of jail. And they'll be the first to scream bloody murder if somebody on the other side is just accused of something like that. Don't you sit there and get me wrong. Anybody who breaks that law ought to be prosecuted. Anybody, anybody. I ain't taking up for nobody. I'm exposing hypocrisy. It's like this. The other day, I heard, I heard the media, and I hadn't hardly seen the news this week. I've been really, really busy. And, but everybody was talking to me, and I turned on the news, and every TV was saying, Oprah's running for president. Oprah's running for president. Oprah, have y'all heard that? that? Oprah Winfrey's running for president. And she probably will. And I called that a year ago. You can ask my wife. I think she remembers me. Or Mary Carrie won. I remember thinking, do the Democrats have anybody that could ever beat Donald Trump? And I said, if there's one person that could beat Donald Trump, it's Oprah Winfrey. I said that a year ago. Because that's the way our society thinks nowadays in those kind of terms. And but though they said, oh, she was great. She gave a great speech. Help is on the way. We're saved. Okay. Now hold it. Hold her just a second. This is the same outfit. The very same outfit that was crying about Trump not having no political experience. You remember that? He can't be a politician. He's never been in politics. He's just a reality show. Duh. You talk about reality show. I mean, what's going to happen if she wins? She going to have Kim Jong Young long uh, come over and say, "But how do you feel about how, what we feel? And how do you feel?" And tell the audience, now, "Listen, brother, you can't you can't fuss and raise Cain about." I mean, she, he's just a celebrity wanting attention. Well, she's a celebrity wanting attention. And I'm not, I'm not taking up for Donald Trump, really, I'm not. I'm not, even, I'm not even bragging on him right now. I'm just saying that's hypocrisy. If she did win the presidency, we would mourn for a few days and then support her office as her as the president and keep right on going. You know why? Because we don't want to be hypocritical. I'm helping you. I'm helping you to think. It's like women's feminists are some of the biggest hypocrites in the world. They're all crying, equal rights, equal rights. We want to be treated equal. We are just, you cannot make a difference. You can't even say there's any difference. Men and women are the same. Okay, if that's true, then half the military should be men and half women. If what you're saying is right. If what you're saying is right, if you're dating somebody, they ought to pay for supper half the time and you pay half the time. Equal rights, right. Boy, some of you ladies looking at me so mad. Look, look, Bible-believing Christian values exalts womanhood way higher than them wicked people in Hollywood and their Fibonacci views. 
I believe a man ought to take care of a woman. I believe a man ought to open the door for a woman. I don't open the door for men. If it slams him in the face, he's a man. I can't, if I go to the post office and a man's open the door, I go, ugh. I say, something wrong with you, man? I'm a, I'm a grown man. I can open the door. But I think you ought to open the door for a woman. I think you ought to treat a woman with respect. I think you ought to love her enough to die for her. That's Christian value. But they say, no, we're equal. No, we're equal. Uh, no, you're a hypocrite. They say, well, it's not fair. Why is God always a he? Why is God always a he? They're even rewriting the Bible and making God a she. It says, in the beginning, she created. And then she... And all, uh, 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 I wonder why they don't make the devil a she. That's fair, positive, balanced common sense. Let's write a new Bible and make the devil a woman. <laughs> now, now, what happened just now is your eyes got popped open. If it's right to make God a woman, it's right to make the devil a woman. And they fit it. I better shut up right there. <laughs> Amen, preacher. The people who fuss most about racism are the biggest racists in the country. Racism is when you don't like or hate somebody just because of their race. You don't judge them by their heart or anything, just the color of their skin. And the people who fuss the most about being racist uh, are more racist than the people they're accusing of being a racist. And I get called a racist for saying that. I'm balanced. I'm right on down the middle, brother. I make you think straight. And by the grace of God, it's hypocrisy. What they're, they'll put it on you but won't take the same words themselves. They'll fuss to you to keep their rules. They'll fuss to you to tolerate them. You're supposed to tolerate a gay parade and tolerate it, but you have a Christian parade. It's all right for Marilyn Manson to rip up the Bible. That's expressing his artistic value. Let him take a Koran and rip it up here, and you'll be all over the news and start a war. That's hypocrisy. You say and do not. Amen, Brother Danny. That's right. The bride of Christ. They said, why does God have to be a, a man? Why does the bride of Christ have to be a woman? I'm offended. It's not right. It's not right, you female chauvinist. Is that right? Female chauvinist? I don't know if there is such a thing. There is such a thing, but I might not have said it right. Uh, no, I ain't preaching about that. That's another message. I'm just kidding. But see, it works. You know what they don't? They want, they want to straighten you out, but they don't want nobody straightening them out. They want to tell you what you should do. They don't want to listen to it. Now, come on, y'all. Come on. Now, if a, if a woman gets mad and says, well, it's not right that, that God is a man. Well, okay, it's not right that the bride is a woman. I'm a part of the bride of Christ. That's calling me a woman. You know what I say to that? Amen, Lord. You can call me anything you want to. I'm proud and happy to be a part of the bride of Christ. I'm not going to hell. I'll be whatever he tells me to be, brother. I don't care, brother. I'll be Kermit the Frog if he wants me to, if he keep me out of hell. People crazy. That's hypocrisy. They profess that they know him, but in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and under every good work reprobate. Number four, and I'm through. It's when you make rules for other people that you won't keep for yourself. Jesus put it like this, you bind men with heavy burdens, but won't touch one of them with your finger. It's like these people that are married and living a good life and haven't made, telling this woman recently divorced, she has to live by herself the rest of her life. Put that heavy burden on her. They wouldn't touch it with one of their fingers. There's all kind of stuff like that I could preach on today. It's like Al Gore and them fussing about the polluting the atmosphere and air and fly around in a blessed jet. You know how much stuff a jet puts out? Lord have mercy for everybody in the United States cars. Don't put that as much as them jets, all them things put together. Amen. No more, preacher. I'm quitting. They'd take a fit if we did what they did. How many will admit this morning? You know what, preacher? 
I'm bad for putting rules on other people that I won't keep myself. I'm bad for looking down my nose at others when I tolerate much worse than my own. Here's your good rule to go by, and I'm through. Here's your good rule to go by. Never criticize another person for, for what you tolerate in your own life. Don't judge somebody else for what you allow in your own heart. Don't criticize other people the way they do or don't do or attend or don't attend when you don't even do it. Amen? Don't accuse, don't criticize the way one woman raises her kids when you won't even do yours right. You're better off just to say, Lord, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Amen? Actually, we're better off to keep our mouth shut, mind our own business, serve God, leave the preaching to the pulpit and, and the Word of God and, and quit, everybody quit trying to straighten everybody else out. Amen. Facebook is one of the worst things that's ever happened in this country. Amen. It really is. One of the worst. I know some good has been done, but 98% has hurt our country and our churches. <laughs> I was listening for preaching. got thrown this by accident because I can't stand stuff like this. And the guy got on and he said, I've been attacked. I've been attacked. In the last video I made, I've been attacked. And so I'm making a response in that video, and I'm going to respond to those that have attacked me. I looked down, he had like 200 people, views. And he took 10 minutes talking about how he had been attacked. I thought, you big baby, get on there and preach if you're going to. Quit whining about being attacked. You can't preach and not get attacked. If you can't take an attack, shut up and, get, and, and put your Bible down and sit down. You're going to get it. If you stand up for God, you're going to get it. Read some, read some of the comments I get, buddy. You have to just learn not to care about it. You can't respond to every One girl gets on her and she says, Oh, my feelings are hurt. Oh, they're talking about me. If you would turn that stupid thing off and do your housework and pray and read your Bible, they wouldn't even know nothing what's going on in your life. Amen. I put that last video on and they made fun of me, so I'm going to make another video. Yeah, and they're going to make fun of that one too. You nut. The whole world don't revolve around you and your computer. The whole world, it ain't come care about your problems. Get busy for God. Beware of hypocrisy. Live right. Serve God. Amen. He'll bless you for it. Amen. All right. Give you something to think about there. I want you to ask yourself a question. Lord, another place Jesus said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. A wicked, wicked sin. It's a sin everybody hates. Even people that do it hate it in other people. Let's ask God, are we real? A hypocrite never intends to be what he pretends to be. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Amen. Every, every head bowed. Nobody's talking. Now you say, ain't no way in the world I'm going to go to the altar preacher. After you preached on that, I don't want people to think I'm a hypocrite. The truth is, all of us, all of us, in some way or another, are hypocrites sometimes. We really are. 